When did you start the Mob Ties brand name? I mean, Mob Ties derives from Young Mafia. I started Young Mafia. We used to call it Young Mob. Uh -huh. I started Young Mob, me and a couple of the homies. We started Young Mob probably early high school, like my 10th grade year. We started an entity where I brought all the different sides of town together and made one collective group for us to get money. You do know what I'm saying? And be better. And that transitioned as we got older. We not young no more. Right. And we not stupid no more. We were young and dumb back then. That transition from young mob into mob ties. And that's the adult version to where all the homies, we getting all the homies from city to city, state to state. The strong minded homies. Right. Not the stupid ones. Mm. Not the shooters, not the fighters. We don't need all that. We like the ones who know how to use their mind. The ones who know how to think, the ones who bring value to the table. They still, they stand for what they stand for, but at the same time, they understand that it's a bigger picture and that we can be better together than just as an individual. You know what I'm saying? We only could do so much on our own, mm. but collectively, yeah, we can compete with the Jews. Definitely. No, it's a beautiful thing. Um, talk to me about how you guys started your relationship with Drake, because that's one profound relationship, apparently. You guys seem incredibly close, him and the whole family. When when did that begin? I mean, it's 10, 12, 15 years plus. Because like, your brother, like, found him on MySpace, right? Yeah, my brother found him on MySpace. He ended up bringing them to the table. Everybody sat down, had a meeting, listened to the music, and it's history from there. To tell you the truth, my old man, you know, he been out the loop a little bit when it comes to this music guy. So he wasn't even just in tune to the talent that Drake had. Right. But my brother was. So he believed in him. And shit, the rest is history. The biggest artist in the world. Yeah. And have you guys remained uh tight since then since the early oh, yeah, days without a doubt without a doubt it's family for life like family for life drake is a brother a good friend a good individual his heart good so he family for life like, can't nobody or nothing get in between it even when him and meek had this situation going on it wasn't nothing that could get in between it you know what i'm saying meek my brother and drake my brother i had to remain neutral mm. You know what I'm saying? Was so, that awkward? Because to a lot of people, it's like you, you see the inspirational quotes on Instagram. It's like, if, you, if you're kicking it with my enemy, then you ain't my friend, that type of shit. I mean, it just it just depends on where the beef derived from. Mm. If it was a serious situation and somebody was in the wrong, then I'd tell them you're wrong. Mm. But that situation wasn't no real beef wasn't no situation where you had to choose sides because somebody really did something drastically wrong or yeah. anything like that. So I remained neutral. I really was the go-between to them. Like when Meek wanted to send Drake a message or when Drake wanted to send Meek a message, they called me. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, hey man, da, da, da. hey. Da, da. So there was a lot of talking that we didn't necessarily know about from the from the public eye? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of shit go on behind closed doors. Mm. I bet. Interesting. Is that weird for you when you see like a, a a narrative being displayed publicly about either yourself or your family or an artist that you guys are working with and you know that that's not really how it's going, but then at the same time, it's kind of like you're making it worse almost if you jump in there and start correcting the, the record. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a situation. That's a situation we all got to deal with, but it's just not entertaining bullshit. Mm. If you know what it is and you know what's really transpiring, you ain't got to pay attention to the rest of it because you in tune to what's really going on. So, you know, social media going to be social media. The internet going to be the internet. Like, everybody got their perspectives and their own idea of what's going on, but they're not in the loop. Mm. So if you in the loop and you really know what's transpiring, you ain't got to worry about that bullshit because we know the people who matter. Yeah, social media is like usually almost exclusively the people who don't really know anything aside from what they've seen in the news or on somebody else's Twitter or whatever. And you just can't let that bait you in. Mm. Is it? Has there been a reason, like I think I mentioned this before, but is there a reason that you sort of avoided doing interviews in the past? Like, did you want to be a more secretive person or somebody who, you know, their actions spoke for them? And, and did you feel like doing an interview might take away from that? I mean, yeah. And... 
I understand, like, <laughs> I understand how this internet shit go. I know when you give people the power to display you how they want to display you, they might not display you in the manner that you want to be displayed. Mm -hmm. You dig? And I learned that as a kid. When I had my crib in Miami, I did a, uh, I did an MTV Cribs in my crib in Miami, probably like 2008, 2009, when I was young. And we had a bunch of guns and stuff mm. in the house, but they were legal. We had, we had our gun licenses, they were legal, but I didn't know they were with us for like four days. I didn't know that they were going to try to capitalize off the bullshit mm. rather than the real shit. And they actually made the cover on world star and everything with me with a gun in my hand wow. instead of capitalizing on this why you put the house right there that's what y'all here for yeah, but they made it to where they had me with a gun in my hand the whole 10 seconds out of four or three days that they was with us they capitalized on bullshit right you know what i'm saying and i just learned a lesson then and never wanted to put myself in that same position where somebody can misrepresent me or put me in a tricky situation. Cause as soon as I left there, I went to New York and I caught a pistol case in New York from the hip hop police. For real? Yeah, so I ain't never want nobody to tarnish my name or put me in a situation where I could be set up again. That's crazy. Damn, yeah, and you're constantly sort of making that decision. Like, you know, when you see people get decide to go do love and hip hop, it's like, yeah, you might be getting a check off that. You might be getting some more notoriety, but you're putting yourself in a situation where they can and will take every little bit of your personality and shape it to fit yeah. a narrative. And who knows, maybe you get to be the good guy, but chances are they yeah. probably not. And I had those offers too. They flew out to Houston. They tried to get me on love and hip hop Atlanta. They tried to get me on love and hip hop LA. Then, you know, they were shooting the Love and Hip Hop Houston. They flew their whole crew out to come interview everybody and things like that. But I ended up making a decision where I didn't want to do it because you never can trade respect for attention. Mm. I never trade my respect for attention. We good already. We got too many avenues where we can get some money. So I don't need that platform in order to be successful. Mm. So I would never lower my values or let anyone misrepresent what it is that my family stand for based upon trying to get some attention. Like, mm. That don't mean nothing. The money means something. Yeah, definitely. And respect. And especially just knowing that their business is basically taking your relationship and making that look all crazy. Yeah, That's nah, extra messy. Yeah, I was going to be in trouble, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be right. in trouble, trouble. It's like if, if you're not a cheater, you're going to probably be in that first meeting. They're going to be like, all right, so we got to find somebody for you to cheat with. <laughs> yeah, they try to pair me up with so many different right. girls. Oh, yeah, they do that for you too, huh? Yeah, they try to pair me up with a bunch of different people. But, you know, shout out Love and Hip Hop. They successful. I love what they doing. Y'all keep getting y'all money. That's hilarious. When did you pick up the vape? Yeah, I introduced the vape to Houston. Oh, for real? What yeah. year? That's that nigga signature. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking man, it's been, Big clouds. <laughs> it's been over, man, probably down to 10 years. Like, I, I was smoking the vape when people ain't know what a vape was. They were walking up to me in the club like, what is that that you puffing Some on? Some robotic, futuristic shit. Hey, man, you got to keep best to best, man. The Bugattis. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. So, so uh, do you feel like your brother got what he deserved out of the Drake situation? Because I know at one point there was a lawsuit, some sort of legal situation. Is that all resolved now? Everything good. Everybody rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we knew that. Everybody rich. Everything good, man. That's what's up. Yeah. So, so when you're driving around in the car at this point in your life, what are you listening to? Hmm. What am I listening to? You know, I I got artists that I'm working with, so I like to jam and critique their music so mm -hmm. that I can make them better than what they are. So I'm listening to DJ XO. I'm listening to Jay the Great. I'm listening to Honeycomb Brazy. I'm listening to Meek. I'm listening to Drake. I'm listening to Family, the guys who give me music that I feel like I could relate to. Mm. That's who I listen to. There's a lot of exciting shit coming out of Texas right now in general, though, too. It's like kind of a, a renaissance out there right now. It's oh, working. Yeah. We, we kind of got Megan leading the, leading the charge. Shout oh, out to all the ladies the doubt, out there. Shout right out to Megan right the she Stallion, is. man. She, mm -hmm. she is, to me personally, and everybody can have their own opinion, but she the coldest female in the game right now. And that's not discrediting 
any other artist that's not taking away what they've accomplished. We talking about a rookie, you mm. know what I'm saying? She a rookie, she fresh off the boat. But she the coldest female out there right now, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, Naturally, too. And then mm. the thing about Megan is, Megan really from the ghetto. Really? Like, she really from the hood. So the shit that she talking about, she really about that. I can't speak on everybody else because I don't know them like that. I don't know where they come from. I know where she come from. She really from the ghetto. She really from the projects. And she's transitioned to a star. You did. So shout out to Megan. Shout out to 1501. Shout out to T-Fed. Shout out to all the, shout out to Carl Crawford. Yeah, shout out to all of them, man. They straight out the hood. Carl from Fifth Ward, too. I'm from Fifth Ward. So it's a big thing. It's a big movement for us. They got the blueprint. They doing what they need to do with it. Definitely. Yeah, and she really wraps her ass off, too, which is the thing I like the most bullshit. about her is it's yeah. just like, damn, like, it's street. She Ooh. really is, yeah, my favorite girl artist solid, in man. the game. And it ain't that she from Houston. It's that, yeah, she really kicking this shit. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to be able to say that knowing that all she got out is like a little a little project that she probably didn't have too much time to work on yeah, and shit. Yeah. Like the, so the, the future for her is crazy. scary to now think the, about what she might do. Now the doors are open. Mm. She didn't have those doors open at first. Now <clears> she <throat> get to work with the best of the best in the music game. Mm. So it's going to take her whole talent to a whole nother level. And put in that light. I, I'm excited for her next album. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. I'm Same. excited for it. For sure. Um, last last question, possibly last question. I seen you rocking out to Old Town Road on your story. Oh no, see there you go with the message. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was gonna be What's spicy. wrong with that? What's wrong with Old Town Road? Yeah, nah, we, no, we, we ain't talking about no, no crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, 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 you ready though? You ready for the question? Yeah, this grown before. and mature question. <laughs> that was before. <laughs> Here's a grown and mature they, question. The door was open. <laughs> the synergy, the merge of hip hop and country. Being that you're from Texas, do you see this as something that is maybe a little bit inevitable in the sense that, you know, I'm sure you've been exposed to country at least a little bit for your whole life, hearing it out of people's trucks and shit like that. Do you think that this is the time for that merger of that? Because that's kind of like Texas is like the white side of Texas and the black side of Texas coming together in a way. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I feel like hip hop is a big influence on everything. Mm. You got it was only a matter of time until they got hit by it, right? Yeah, so <laughs> it's just how big our culture is, how big the influence is that eventually it's going to yeah, link up with everything. Mm. Eventually, yeah. It was inevitable. I seen it coming. I ain't know it was going to be like this. <laughs> right. 19 weeks is number one, man. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, though, and I can't even knock it. Like, I ain't got no problem with homie. Hey, man, get your money. You're mm. doing what you're doing. Regardless of yeah, whatever, yeah, it's all good. Get your money. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, so you going you going on to Atlanta after this? What 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 keeps you on the move? Like what what do you when you typically run through a city? What are you uh, popping up to do? What's your, what's your main I business? I mean, majority of the time, me and London on the track, we're working on this compilation album, Martyrs compilation album. Okay. We both co-executive producing. So majority of the time, when I be in these cities for a couple of weeks, so I'm steady on the move. It's because I'm linking up with different artists trying to put this album together. Uh -huh. yeah, it's gonna be a masterpiece. Like, it's, yeah, it's gonna be crazy. All the hottest niggas in the game mm. on one joint venture, kind of like Cali, but but different for the streets. Yeah, yeah for us, in my way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cali did a beautiful thing, and yeah, shout out to him. He's a boss. But yeah, I'm gonna do it in my own way, my own manner. Multi-task compilation on the way. You did. That's what's up. Shout out London. I'm ready for that, man. Oh, man. 